afternoon. Well, let's take a look at these numbers because, as I said, they're a slight inching lower off, off your profits for the first half period where we've seen a weakening trend in the performance of the bourse so really take, take hold of the company and its performance. Take us through the half year that was for the company. Yes, good afternoon and thank you for that. Uh, we announced our results today uh, and our profit before tax came down by 1% to 828 million. Net asset value per share uh, was more or less TD at around 18 shillings and 70 cents. Uh, really our focus uh, in light of the very difficult uh, conditions, economic conditions we've been going through in Kenya, We've seen uh, the stock market fall significantly. We've seen interest rates shoot up to levels that have not been seen in many years and a significant weakening of the Kenya shilling. Our focus was on protecting the value of our assets mm -hmm. and so that we could uh, maintain what we had, uh, the value we had created over the last two years and to also position the company to take advantage of the upturn when it does come. And in that regard, we significantly reduced our exposure to the stock market. Let's take a look and at how exactly, our, because like you say, holdings. at the yeah. core of this is that <clears throat> value protection where this time around we've had NAV being able to be maintained at 18.76 uh, uh, Kenyan shillings. Uh, you're talking about this reduction in market exposure. Just how much so? We, we, we sold more than half of our, of our listed equities. We, at the beginning of March, at the end of March, we had about 24% exposure to the stock market. And we've reduced that to, to 9%. And we, we carried out the bulk of our exits in March, April, and May, June, before the market took uh, a nosedive. So in that respect, our timing was, was, was fairly good. And we then moved into cash. And, and, and this, this is an appropriate time to have cash because we're seeing a lot of attractive opportunities across all the major asset classes, fixed income and uh, private equity. You've got quite a focus on that property segment of the market as well, James. Run us through some of the strategy there because you're currently developing a large property in Runda, Nairobi. Yes, our focus is around uh, developing uh, in the commercial real estate market segment. So what we are planning to do on our Limuru Road project is uh, an integrated development that will have a blend of offices, uh, retail, uh, hospitality, and uh, service departments, so providing an integrated development. F to give you context, is something similar to what you have in Johannesburg, the Melrose Arch, mm -hmm. and we have 100 acres, and we intend to start our first phase on 15 acres. And, and the, first, the first phase is going to have about 1.6 million square feet of, of development. We have completed the master plan. We are going through the approval process, and we target to break ground sometimes in 2012. We're also engaging with uh, the market and uh, potential off-takers. And so far, the, the response has been very positive. And this is uh, underpinned by the significant interest uh, that has been generated globally by what is happening in Africa. A lot of companies want to set up in Africa. And they're looking for space in, um, in, in world-class uh, destinations, destinations that are similar to what they're used to, and uh, destinations that address their concerns around security, around traffic, around uh, infrastructure, and also lifestyle. Yeah. Uh, on the funding side of it all, James, I mean, you're looking for both local and foreign investors to provide funds for this development specifically. But give us a sense of the market that you're operating in right now. Just how difficult is it as a private equity uh, investor to raise capital for uh, investments at this stage? For this, this particular project, the phase one is going to require about $100 million. Out of that $100 million, we, we estimate the equity is going to be about $30 to $40 million. As a center, we have the capacity to mobilize the bulk of that capital, but we also have a number of other investors who have expressed an interest in partnering with us. Mm -hmm. On the debt side, we need about $60 to $70 million, uh, and we've engaged with a number of lenders, uh, local and international, who are interested in uh, providing financing. The challenge with local financing at present is the high interest rate environment. And uh, so we may end up settling for a uh, dollar denominated uh, debt, which, which, which pricing is more reasonable. And then also try and get dollar denominated revenues on the, yeah. on the rental side of things. So it's challenging, but it's, it's possible and it's uh, helpful that we now have cash 
on our balance sheet. And you're looking at this uh, position to be maintained, that this is a development that's going to be developed for rental or lease purposes specifically, rather than selling them at once, uh, you know, uh, at, at once at the end of it all. Yes, because it's commercial real estate, the, the bulk of it is going to be leased or rented. The idea here is to create an entity with a very strong and diversified revenue stream that is uh, underpinned by a diverse uh, group of high quality tenants and then be able to sell this as a financial instrument to investors either in the form of a rate or a simple investment where pension yeah. fund institutional investors or insurance companies can come and uh, take a stake in it once we complete and once the tenants are in. Well, what, we've, uh, what you've also done during the course of this period, James, is managed to get approval for the creation of three subsidi uh, subsidiaries to boost the firm's expansion <coughs> strategy. Uh, take us through that new model and to what extent it is going to be a game changer for the company. We, we made a decision uh, two years ago to diversify outside Kenya and we are currently at 20% outside Kenya and that, that, that has proven very useful especially in light of the weakening Kenya shilling. So our target is to be at 50% of assets invested outside Kenya over the next three years. So the objective of the three companies that we have incorporated in Mauritius is to have them act as a holding companies for our investments in other parts of Africa. Uh, Mauritius, as you are aware, has double tax treaties with uh, a lot of other African countries hence limits uh, issues of double taxation and it's also a jurisdiction that is very well understood by investors across the globe who are looking to set up in Africa. Mm -hmm. So the objective is to use those as vehicles through which investors can invest in the various projects that we are undertaking. In, in, in various parts of Africa. Of course, uh, looking at you know, these territories, you've honed in specifically on the likes of Mauritius and Uganda. Why has that focus uh, come to the fore? Uh, as far as Uganda is concerned, it's a, it's, a, it's a neighboring country to Kenya. It's a market we understand well. We saw a, a, an opportunity on the real estate uh, front. Uh, Uganda has uh, discovered significant oil, re oil reserves. There's, they might be commercialized uh, very soon. And there is significant demand for real estate. There's also significant demand by investors for real estate assets. So it made sense for us to be in Uganda. Mauritius, as I've mentioned, is a, yeah. is a channel through which we're investing in, in other countries, including Uganda. So we're not necessarily investing in Mauritius, but we're using Mauritius as, a, as, as an avenue to then invest in other in other countries, one of them being Uganda. And even Kenya, we are holding our asset through a Mauritius entity so that then it can be easier for other investors who would like to invite to invest with us uh, J to James, use that as a vehicle. You currently have a uh, zero dividend policy. I mean, is there, is there any chance of that changing anytime soon? No, I think we've been very clear that we intend to maintain a zero dividend policy until 2014 uh, because that has allowed us to reinvest the cash that we have generated in the business. I think this particular environment, it's actually more important to maintain that policy because it's now a buyer's market. There are significant opportunities, very attractive opportunities, and we need to take advantage of those opportunities to position ourselves to do even better in the coming years.